Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be checking out Battle Sector. You see, they just recently had another DLC drop around the same time as the Shadows of Change DLC, which meant that unfortunately I just didn't have the time to cover both. However, I can confirm that the publishers, Slytherin, have sent me a key and I want to talk about it because it's actually fairly decent. There's a few things that I do want to talk about it in general, but also the fact that it does have some generally good DLC practices. You see, the Corn Demons have actually been in game for a while. This is due to Demonic Incursion Mode, which was released a long time back. It's something that the devs are actually quite known for. They introduce new paid-for content, but also some free content, which will give you the new game mode, for example, right? And the idea is also to hint at future content in the future, uh, and I think it's actually quite a good practice. Now, since the majority of the Corn faction had actually already been added in, and only a little bit more work had to be added in, for example, the new Demon Prince that we'll talk about in a little bit, and obviously stuff for the Planetary Supremacy mode, which is the campaign sandbox, well, as you can see on screen, yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah, the, they made the DLC a lot cheaper than all the other ones, uh, mostly because the grand majority of the roster had already been implemented in-game. So rather than costing the usual amount, which so far the average is around 12 to 14 euros, it does depend on your currency, the Demons of Corn cost 5. Which, yeah, you know, you get a little bit less, so you pay less. I actually think this is a very good DLC practice, as it does show that the developers do actually care about the community. It's kind of funny, though, that a bunch of people are complaining about this DLC because of the pricing, where I think that the pricing is actually incredibly fair, especially when we've seen other companies. I'm not just talking about Creative Assembly, I'm talking about a lot of Warhammer devs who will try to sell everything to you at a premium. So I honestly think this is a really good, good way to deal with the community. Yes, they still need to earn some money, they did add some new stuff, and a lot of other back office stuff that I guess we don't really see, but yeah, I think it's a pretty good system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the DLC, we're going to check out what it actually has, and I do have a few gripes with it, don't get me wrong, so we're going to talk about that too. Alright, we're going to jump into army management so you can see all the troops that are available. It's not a big roster compared to all the others, but then again, Monogod Corn is very small. So what was already in the game was the Bloodthirst, uh, pretty much every unit there, barring the Demon Prince. So in total... Eight troops, not a lot there, and there's not a lot of types of weapon variety. I know some people did complain about that, but the problem is that, you know, Blood Masters, Blood Crushers, and, well, just general Blood Letters, they use the same type of weapon. This is the problem with Demons, not so much the DLC. Games Workshop should really start giving attention to Demon Factions in all the settings, in all honesty, but, um, yeah, we've not been able to see anything just yet. Again, as per usual, all the models look fantastic. One thing that I very heavily like about the studio is that they will get the miniatures and use them as points of reference rather than artwork. So this means that you're getting your miniature, you're getting basically what you're painting. And I do appreciate the Demon Prince quite a bit because it's based on the older model. This is the old Metal Demon Prince. A lot of people do love that one because, I mean, it's a classic, you know, it shows up in a lot of artwork and it's just really, really cool. Yes, it's not based on a current miniature, but goddamn, man, I mean, it's super cool. Now, there are a few things which are a little bit annoying about this roster. The fact of the matter is, uh, we got a Bloodmaster, but we don't really have a Herald. We don't have a Blood Throne, which is something that would share the same basic rig as the Skull Cannon. Uh, it's a bit weird that they decided to skip that one, especially because the Herald and even the Bloodmaster, in all honesty, could have had a upgrade to have a Blood Throne to give you a bit of a buffer unit, as it is kind of needed in certain things. We'll get into the gameplay a little bit later, and it would have been nice. I'm not saying it should have happened, but it would have been nice to have Furies. Just give them a red tint for corn, but again, you're paying 5 euros for this, you're getting less uh, than usual, so you are going to pay less, and to be honest, I'm okay with this. The faction isn't too bad itself, you don't have a lot of variety in terms of items, like I said, that's the problem that the demons have always really had themselves, so I can't really fault it too much. Um, one gripe I do have is the Soul Grinder. So the Soul Grinder has the 
range version and obviously that's to give them a little bit of range i would have just gone with a proper cornate one which is with the sword too but i understand it's a little bit of balancing purposes so you can have something extra in range and you're not just using the skull cannons just to provide you a little bit of support so if you're too far away from the enemy you can't get up to them close well you can fire at them and then you know push your way up that way it does do very very well in melee though all the units kind of do and we'll talk about how I find the units a little bit later. But in terms of roster, I wouldn't say it's too bad. You're a melee focused faction. It might not be the most entertaining to people, especially since, you know, the Tyranids do have better range. But the idea is you go in, you rip them apart, and you start moving on to the next enemy. So as usual, you can either play multiplayer or jump into a campaign with planetary supremacy, which is becoming a lot more uh, <laughs> varied. You will be finding pretty much two core enemy factions and then obviously you've got the others too with the minor stuff when you're taking over locations. What I would really like in all honesty is if they start thinking about adding in more. I would love to see a larger map here and just add in as many other factions as possible so it's not just you versus Blood Angels and Tyranids for example, you know, reliving the whole Devastation of Bowl and just having a little bit of fun there just being able to see other stuff you never know the devs could have that in mind but i would honestly really love to see just in general more from this game because i do really enjoy it and it would be nice to have like a big map versus everyone every faction is an active faction just killing each other then dealing with the minor factions too just yeah, it would be cool. Mind you, the world does feel fairly large, especially when you start jumping into the campaign. It's just, you know, some people want more, and I think that I'm one of those ones, right? <laughs> so one thing that people have been complaining about this DLC, and I kind of understand why, is the fact that the tech tree is very, very small. It won't take long for you to be able to get everything, which means that you do get quite strong quite quickly. Also, picking up the Soul Grinder pretty much after your first battle is uh, is very, very strong. I understand why it's done, because you are lacking on everything else, but it does feel a little bit too OP. I mean, the tech isn't too much, there's not a lot of abilities, so you're going to be getting that out of the way quickly. I wouldn't say this is a bad thing. You will suffer, by the way, versus Necrons, or at least that's how I've been suffering. Every other faction I'm alright with, but with Necrons, I tend to suffer with Korn. I guess it's just they've got such great damage output. But overall, I must say, very impressed with what we have. And again, the price is very, very good. I know some people are annoyed about that, but the end of the day is... Uh, i rather pay 5 euros and get something that works functionally than not, right? Alright, so let's talk about the DLC in general. I honestly think this is pretty good. Yeah, you will struggle a little bit with corn if you're not used to just going full melee, but this is how it goes. There are a few things I would have liked. I would have liked, for example, seeing as you do get decent momentum, I'm not sure if this is an actual thing and I just couldn't trigger it, but if you do kill off a unit and you do get some momentum, you should be able to attack again, mostly because... I mean, it's corn, right? This is just a personal feeling of mine. It's just it will make them feel a lot better, especially when you're fighting against Necrons, who will do a lot of damage on you. Versus all the other factions, depending on what their builds are, yeah, you're pretty much fine. I must say, quite enjoyed the Planetary Supremacy as the corn faction, as it definitely feels like you're playing corn demons. I know a lot of people were expecting, like, a World Eaters thing. I imagine that this game came into production and this DLC came into production, or just, like, the planning was prior to the World Eaters Codex as uh, it does kind of feel like a lot of older stuff is inspired here alongside the newer stuff hence the Corn Demon Prince being something retro alongside the very new Necrons well not really new at this point as they were launched around 9th edition uh, so yeah I kind of like this honestly I think the pricing is incredibly fair for what you're getting especially when comparing it to other Warhammer titles or just titles in general there are loads of companies that will take the piss with uh, just changing a mechanic rather than, you know, implementing something new. So, yeah, I honestly think this is fairly good. If they implement other demon factions, because obviously Zine, Schnurgle, and Sunesh are pending, well, we don't know if they're actually pending or not, but, like, they're missing. Uh, five euros, I think, is kind of fair. Slowly but surely, this game is filling out with pretty much all the factions, and I think it's pretty good. Their release cadence hasn't been too bad. I mean, uh, this one came out in August 24th. The last DLC were the Orcs, right? And the Orcs came out in May. Yeah, every two months. I don't know if it's going to be like that, because I believe previous DLC was the previous year. Yes, it was April and December, 
but it's pretty good candence for what it is. One thing is fairly certain, this has been receiving more support than other Warhammer games, and no, I'm not even referring to like Total War at this point, uh, because Total War, despite the fact, is having a rough time, it's still getting support, it's still getting patches. I mean, we've been getting patches for Darktide, but uh, a lot of stuff that were promised for launch a year later aren't still here. Yeah, that's fun. But, yeah, I'm going to let the rest of the battle play out. You can see them in action. It's not the best army, I must say. Though I must be very honest, I quite enjoy how the Bloodhounds work. The Flesh Hounds are very, very good. Much better than the uh, Bloodletters, I would say. And, um, yeah, probably too many Skull Cannons in my pop. But the problem is that I was going with what I already had. Yeah, honestly, pretty happy overall. It's a pretty decent faction. Can't wait to see Sinesh, though, because I'm more a fan of Sinesh than anything else. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of discussion, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Plus, uh, just a quick note, I think I'm going to check very quickly. Yeah, this game is currently on sale until the 4th of September, so tomorrow. Uh, in case you're seeing this video today... I would recommend picking it up. It's 40% off. The DLC is also getting a pretty decent discount in general, barring the demons because that's just recently come out. Um, if you like Warhammer 40k and if you like a good story, the story is based on just the Blood Angels, but it's well written and the animation is fantastic. It's something that I heavily praise. You might want to pick this up. But yeah, guys, have a nice day and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Beast awaits. My gaze will be blood tribute. Oh, 
bloody feast awaits! And 
Take. 